I don't want to skip work. <laughs> ah, yay. Okay, here we are again. Captain's Corner. It's Monday, best day of the week. Who needs a weekend? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, um, welcome to the Captain's Corner, everyone. This is your place to get informed about first steps. Uh, to recovery and also to find out how we at Safe Harbor help to create um, healthy and safe environments, uh, communities <laughs> and environments kind of together. Um, <laughs> oh my God, we are almost in summer mode here. Um, so to our today's topic is about true homelessness. And Kath and I, we um, chatted about our, about this topic before we started. And um, so I was wondering, and I wanted to ask you that even before we started, Kath, what is, like, what do you mean? Like, you talked about true homelessness, but what does it actually mean? Well, it's an expression I've, I have heard a lot lately. And bef before I answer that, I would ask you, if you hear that term, like someone, this is, we are talking about the true homeless here. What springs to mind for you when you think about that? Mm -hmm. So, so I would say someone or like thinking someone who is truly homeless is someone who um, is in a situation that was, he's not really, something happened. It's not really that person's fault and he has nowhere to go, lives on the street, is an honest guy, girl, and is looking to improve the situation. So. Okay, well, I, I've been asking a few people that uh, mm -hmm. for their take on that, and your answer is, is similar to theirs, you know, uh, someone, a group of people that are the true homeless, I think, and probably I would need to ask every person I've heard that expression from to get their take on it, but I think what they're referring to are those people that you just said. Um, but he lost his job all of a sudden or COVID happened and he couldn't work or uh, all kinds of things that can happen. Uh, and through no fault of their own, through no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. And so They didn't deserve what happened to them, right? And it's a, it's a category of people for sure. And we have people, lots of people like that. Mustard seed helps a lot of people who are in that boat. Well, lots of nonprofits do, but mustard seed helps in the form of shelter and food and connections and resources and for those people through no fault of their own um, who didn't deserve it. So then are there so the question? Who's yeah. the other guys? Yeah, like and, and do they deserve it? Uh, well, they chose it. They chose it. Hmm. Right? So here lies the issue. And this is this is what I see happening so much right now. And it's happening here and across the country more than it ever has before. It, it's very, very visible, all of this now, okay? And this, so when we think about our shelter, that shelters people who are under the influence of substances, uh, they're under the influence of substances, substances that they chose to use and they're homeless. And so it's that then another category, okay? Okay, you guys are here and the true homeless are over here. And all of us really want to support those true homeless people because we get it, man. Mm -hmm. All of us are a job away from, you know, if we lost our job or whatever, a horrible thing happened, we could be here. We understand this place really well. And we, you know, this, this is through, they couldn't help it. Right? This other crowd over here can help it. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, you just look at that and say, now that's enough. And 
you're going to go here and get better and that's enough right so are they still homeless definitely probably more and uh, way harder to house mm-hmm. than the true homeless you know true homeless don't have to stay in a shelter very long before they can get somewhere because they still have their capacity here and and they still have connections to people and they're ahead of the game over here this is looks much different right and when we think you know when i the city just finished they did all that oh boy all those sessions uh the survey and the sessions the online sessions and people submitted emails and on saturday the city released on their website the culmination of all of that input all of it and they had a great response it was great the community got to to have their voice and say hey this is what i want to tell you about this right and so they released that saturday morning and i was going through it and encouraged by the amount of people that did get to speak out right um and in that um I saw so much frustration and anger Mm -hmm. and fear, rightly so, because the homeless people, not the true ones, but the other guys, Mm -hmm. right, are wreaking havoc. And it's worse than it ever was. And people are scared. And they are 100% correct, right? So what... (laughs) We have to understand that and we have to accept that, that this is what these other guys, where they are. They are in, rather than talking about homelessness, we have a a homeless crisis. We need lots of houses for people experiencing homelessness, no doubt. But the fear and the frustration and the Mm -hmm. angst that is coming from the community is related to all of the scary stuff they see with the people who are actively using substances. Yes. Right? Yeah, I totally get it. Most people aren't afraid of just Mm -hmm. true homeless guy. You know, he's not freaking them out too much. And we want to help that guy. Right? You could probably have a conversation with that guy when you meet him. Yeah. And, but they don't come with tags. True homeless guy could also not be working because he's got a really bad mental illness and can be unpredictable and volatile just as much as Mm -hmm. the other guys. I don't know what they're called. They're not true homeless. They are there. Well, (laughs) I read some words on what they were called in those reports. And, you know, one of them was scourge. And I thought scourge. And then I read the definition of scourge and it's about some, something or someone that is causing problems, you know, and that's mm-hmm. definitely fits, right? Yeah. So here we have this group. The, the place where we're, we have to be so careful because we can't use an old map to chart new territory. Mm. And this other spot needs some new territory because right now because they're actively using substances they are served only through shelter the basic human needs shelter and food um trying to hook them up with resources as best we can but you appreciate the the states of their minds and brains most often and they're very sick even if you know their brains work in half okay their body's really sick so they are, and they are just fixated on getting that next fix. Okay. So that's a really hard place to expect tremendous mm-hmm. moving forward. Mm-hmm. So here we have them, right? There, where else, there is nowhere else. Okay. If they are being troublesome, or maybe in violent fighting or whatever, the RCMP will come, they'll take them. They can't hold them for very long and they'll come back. 
if they're really sick, they'll go to the hospital who will minimize as much as they can, but they can't stay there very long either or won't or leave because they have to get back to it. Yeah. Um, this is a group of people that how do you serve better? How do you? We know how to do the true homeless, if you will. I'm not going to use that expression mm-hmm. anymore, but it's a good example of how people see things, right? Um, and understandably. So what do we do here? And like I said, we just have old maps or we don't even have a map. Yeah. You know, when Safe Harbor started 20 years ago, we had an overnight shelter program called Andy's Place. This was one of our very first programs. We were doing that and doing organizing a group of volunteers who drove people to detox in Edmonton and Calgary while we waited for one here, right? So we had this overnight shelter called Andy's Place. Mm-hmm. It was called Andy's Place because a gentleman named Andy Strawberry froze to death in Rotary Park in the winter. He passed out and froze to death. And the community of Red Deer said, no, that can't happen. Mm-hmm. We have to have a place for people who are in that vulnerable state so we know they have a place to be warm. Right. And that was our very first experience sheltering people who are using substances. So for 20 years, we've run that program. The last for the first 10 years, maybe even 13 years, we were dealing primarily with alcohol and crack. Mm -hmm. And then Right around 2015, 2016, we started to see opioids that we never saw before. And things started to shift dramatically. And since that time, as we all know, we're in a big opioid crisis, addiction crisis. um, And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Now, the province of Alberta, is paying attention. They say, hey, we need to have more treatment beds. We need to get these treatment centers popping. And they're absolutely right. We definitely need more treatment spaces and they're coming and we're very grateful for it. But here's Buddy over here. Mm -hmm. He's not interested in going to treatment. I can't make him go to treatment. Neither can I make him stay in the shelter. I can't, the police can't, the hospital can't. What happens? You know, even when you think right now, we have a lot of people camping outside around the city. I hear, I've heard from a few people, holy doodle, there's like people camping all over. So we're glad the outreach team is out there, but it shows you this. This is the reality too. There's a shelter, but they're not going in the shelter. Why aren't they going in the shelter, Uh, right? Outside of the shelter in the mornings, I see people camping along the side of the building. Like they want to stay close, but they don't want to go in. hmm. Well, why don't they want to go in? They're making a big mess outside, right? Well, they don't want to go in because if they're outside, they can still do their dope and they can still smoke cigarettes. Yeah. And they just will just stay here that's okay right and of course we say no that's not okay you have to get in the shelter and stay in the shelter and don't make a mess anywhere right it doesn't work right so we have to be mindful of those things while we're moving forward and and recognizing this new permanent shelter is not going to be the be end all end all to all Mm -hmm. of these concerns it can't be we can't lock them in there No, we can't force them to go to treatment. So in the meantime, what do we do? What do we do? Nothing. We're just enabling them by giving them a dry place to be and some food. And it certainly looks like that at first glance. But we're also, as we know, we're building connection. And we're trying to get those, when those little windows of opportunity are open, we dive right into Hey, what can we do? You know, how can we help? What, what? And those moments are small because these guys are active in their using. Mm -hmm. Any family member out there who's had someone they love in the throes of addiction know 
the futility of trying to get them to stop. Yeah. And aching for them to stop and all of that, right? So we don't, it's not so much that we have a homeless problem. Homeless is true homeless, if you will. Yeah. It's easy. We know how to fix that. This, we have to look and we have to, and all of us together, because holy doodle, this is it. This is what the community is talking about is this madness. Mm-hmm. What are we doing that's real for mm-hmm. the madness? How do we do something? Where's our professionals? Where's those guys that can help guide us? Yeah. Um, how do we do this better? And it's the people too, in the, the people that are using the shelter that teach us those things, you know, um, they show us, well, that's not going to work for us because look at here, we have a shelter. There's lots of room for you and you're camping outside. What are you doing? You door knock, get inside. So people can't see you is all I think all the time. God. <laughs> So, so Kath, but what is the, you mentioned we need to create a new map. We can't fix the problem when we have an old map. Like what is the new map? Like, is there a new map? Like is somebody working on the new map or like. Yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a thing is the new map isn't built yet. Um, But the need is demanding it. Um, Because if we really want to make a difference, if we really really want to make a difference we got to get we got to step on that harm reduction thing a oh, big huge leap to safe supply coming for people from doctors rather than dealers mm. let those doctors help people let them help them so you know it's is, so is, big mm-hmm so, so do you know, like, um, are there other countries that um, have been doing stuff, like things like that? Like, is there a new map somewhere else? Because I, I heard it, I don't know which countries, but some do exactly that. Do you know? Um, yeah, there's, well, it seems like those guys across the water where you come from over there in that line, mm-hmm. they are all usually ahead of the game. Um, yep. I don't, I don't know why that is. I'm envious of it. But they are, they'll take those bound, leaps and bounds. They'll do something different, right? We are still, I wanted to say we're still building resources um, that, that are out of date for the population, but that's not really true. It's just, it's gotten to be so much. There's so many more, you know, and we can talk about stress. You know what we know about toxic stress and what people do when they're full of toxic stress and how many people through COVID, through all this unemployment, man, through everything in the whole world is, are not stressed out. And then what are they doing to respond to that stress? So you have more and more people, you know, the majority of the people in the shelter that we're seeing are like 25 to 35 years old. That's our young adults, That's our young parents, right? Um, it's it's scary and it takes you know i wish i knew the answers i don't know the answers i just know the reality um but i know that whatever we do we're gonna have to be courageous Mm -hmm. and be real yeah because the crime is associated with having to pay for the drugs yeah if they didn't have to do that, I think things could change considerably. But that's a huge thing. You know, like who's going to buy into that? Like, mm-hmm. that's so big. That would take such open minds. And we're not all there yet. You know, yeah. and, if, and if you're a politician and you're trying to get votes and you want to swing that out at the crowd, you want to see how far you're going to get. <laughs> <Yeah. know. laughs> but it's common sense. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, uh, I'd love to be involved in building a new map and I'd love to have a bunch of smart people that could sit around and I could listen to them, try and figure that out. And, but it, what do you do? You can't force people into treatment and you can't force people to stay in a shelter. So then what are we left to, you know, mm-hmm. um, 
And does it just mean let's get way more resources out in the communities? Let's have like, let's get a whole bunch of outreach workers. Let's get a whole bunch, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe that's the thing. Maybe double two, one, one, you know, like whatever. What can we do locally that would help those communities? Because down straight, they're feeling it. And it's scary and it's gross and it's, it's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. So yeah. is there is there like you mentioned um, that the um, survey like is done the report is published do you know what the next step uh, next steps are with regards to council the council is council is going to talk about that report today I think in their council meeting mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's okay we're going to soak all this up and I don't know they're going to pick site they got to be brave. It's going to be scary for them. Yeah. Like they they should do pin the tail on the donkey. Just <laughs> pick one because it won't matter what they pick. There'll be something. Uh, but they, they will listen and they'll, you know, they know, they know what the people are telling them and they're going to be really mindful of that. I have no doubt. And they also know the need of the, you know, the people that we're serving mm. and yeah, they're going to, they're, going to make a decision yeah and it's always hard you know it's that those are really hard decisions to make I always say as a captain even just just that the harbor the decisions I have to make that are that are based on the needs of the many compared yeah. to the needs of the one are the hardest decisions because the one's needs are really big too to the one mm -hmm. you know and so you'll always you always have to kind of disappoint somebody yeah yeah that's right there is no perfect location no. Uh, yeah Kath is there anything else that you would love to share today oh and also we should let our listeners and um, watchers followers lights <laughs> know that um, we will have we will take a summer break in hey uh, and let's tell them let's tell them about oops. Over 50. Am I frozen? Yes, you're frozen. Hang on. Talk a little further. Oh, you're back. Hello. Okay. The <laughs> PM. Oh, no. Yeah, no, she's frozen. Again. Port Normando. Yes. Okay. Hang on. You are frozen again. Oh, yeah. oh now you're back, kind of. <laughs> so I will translate. <laughs> okay. So I think what Captain Kath was going to say um, is that we will have the, our AGM, our annual AGM at Fort Normando in September. I am not sure about the date, but save the date. <laughs> Maybe Eight, Kath, you can- One. One. One, five. Oh, 15. 15. Okay. <laughs> 15th of September, we will have our AGM at Fort Normando, and you are all invited. We will put out um, a post later to, so that you can save the date. And uh, because we need to know who is coming because there will be food. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And so before we go, we will take a, a summer break. So the next Captain's Corner is next Monday, and then we will be back in September. And it oh. looks like you are back, Kev. Am I back? Yes. <laughs> so okay. Can, can I'm back. It. Just time to sign off. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And if you have any further questions, comments, please put them in the comment box. And um, yeah, see you guys next week, as always. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. <laughs>